Hey guys, this is Spiderbite for NGT Zombies. This is our interactive Tower of Babel Trophy Achievement Guide. In transit, obey the voices. This guide will cover both pathways that you can take. One for Dr. Maxis, the other for Richtofen. Now it is our belief to only be able to complete these fully with four-player co-op. And the reason being is that there are a couple of steps at the towards the end of each pathway that require multiple players to be interacting with the environment. Uh, it may be possible to do one pathway or the other with less players, but we cannot confirm that at this time. The first order of business that I'm going to recommend is that we build the obelisk table. And the reason being is that once you build this table, it is stored in your online profile. We played it on online custom games, and once we built the table, if we exited that game and came into another game, our progress was saved for that table, that build, still existed in every subsequent game we played even if you played solo in order to complete the build on the obelisk we need four components the first component is actually located right at the bus depot it's the meteor rock so we're gonna pick that up while we're here I didn't actually I came back to pick it up but you can pick it up uh, immediately as soon as you exit the bus depot itself and we're gonna make our way to the pylon where it is required to assemble these components into the obelisk now to get to the pylon, we're going to jump out of the bus here. It's on the left-hand side of the road between the farmhouse and the power station. There's an opening in the cornfield where that car was. We're going to go straight down, take a left, take a right, our first left, our first right, and then stick to the left, and we're going to come into the area here. And the table, the obelisk table, bench, whatever you want to call it, is going to be assembled right here. But there's no workbench. You actually have to find it, and it takes some doing in order to find where you need to place the component. And there it is, it just popped up. But again, I'm doing this solo, so the zombie comes in and is bothering me. Uh, so I have to take him out, draw him out, and then run back in and try to do it quickly. Again, whereas with multiplayer, you'd probably have a way easier time, or I guarantee you will have a way easier time with somebody else holding the zombie. Okay, so we find the spot right away, and uh, we're going to assemble the component. But there's already another component there, so there's actually a card reader that is already there. It was just invisible, and once you added your first component, then it appears. All right, what we want to do next is build up some points, and we're going to do that at the power station, number one, because there's an AK-74U on the wall, um, and that is the location where we turn on the power, obviously. I do have a complete guide on transit starting strategies, so if you want to take a look at that, uh, the link should be in the description as well as an annotation for you. The next component we're going to pick up is the board. The board can either be at the power station or in the tunnel in between the bus depot and the diner. For our run through, the board was actually located in the tunnel. There are a couple of different spots in the, the power building that it could be. It could either be in this uh, dark corner, I've seen it in this dark area over here, so it might be difficult to see, or on top of these crates here to my left. There may possibly be one or two other locations, but if you just look around in that general area, you will find it no problem. And here is the board being assembled onto the obelisk. Our third component is the radio. The radio, I've only ever found it in one location. That is at the diner in the garage. We open up the garage and walk over uh, to this cabinet, and it's on top of the cabinet. Now, you actually have to jump in order for the indicator to pop up in order to grab the part. Uh, so we grab that, and uh, then we bring it out to the pylon and assemble that component, and we only have one left. The last component is the electrical box, and it's actually found in the farmhouse uh, to the left of the refrigerator. So we're going to grab that, and we're going to bring it back to the pylon, and we're going to assemble that. And now, again, once we've assembled this, we have completed the build for the obelisk table. If you exit, if you exit the game now and come in a new game using your online profile, if you go local, it won't be there. If you use your online profile like you did when you assembled it, uh, then it will always exist and you never have to build it again, uh, at least as far as we know. So now that you've done this, now that you've assembled the obelisk, exit the game. Exit the game, come back in, so that you start at round one again because maybe it took you to round four or to round five uh, the strategy here is that you want to complete both pathways at the lowest round possible because there are some things you have to kill for dr maxis you won't have perks so you want to make sure that you're not at high rounds and with richtofen i mean you have to last uh, a number of rounds collecting uh, dead basically dead zombies so you want to restart the game so that you start fresh round one 
and you can get out there to complete those pathways at the lowest round possible the, at the least risk to you so you don't end up dying and having to restart. All right, step number two, turn on the power. We're going to drop down the outhouse, and there are three components to turning on the power. The first is, oh yeah, the forearm <laughs> that has been around since Zombies Virut. So we're going to bring that over to the workbench in this other room here. We're going to add the part, and then we have two other components. One is a switch, which is on the console to the left of us right here. We're going to add that part, and then the last is the control panel, which is right behind us. Again, these positions can vary, but all three this components like will be, be found in this area because there's really no way out until you actually turn on the power, or you can actually, you may be able to use your turbine to get out. Okay, so we're going to turn the power on, this party is finally getting started. and we're actually going to see the Avogadro be released. So if you played this map, if you played Transit the whole time without ever turning the power on, you would never see the Avogadro appear uh, as we do or as we have in uh, our gameplays and while doing these Easter eggs. I feel safe in asserting that such so let's listen to what uh, Dr. Maxis has to say. Excellent! You have freed it! But now that you is no natural weather pattern! Power. An active power grid will disrupt all communications between us and make it impossible to accomplish the mission I have for you. Shut down the power. All right, so that's Dr. Maxis telling us that he has some additional things for us to do, but we have to turn off the power first. But in contrast, when we go outside, we have Dr. Richthofen, who only talks to Samuel, say this. Alright, so this is where the storyline separates into two paths. One, you leave the power on and follow Richthofen's path. Two, you turn the power off and you go down Dr. Maxis's path. Now, you can skip to Dr. Richthofen's if you want. There's an annotation, link in the description. Uh, we're going to carry on with uh, Dr. Maxis here. So remember, you just have to go back in and turn that power switch off. I'm not going to show it as a step. It's pretty simplistic. So step number three here is to power the obelisk, and it's actually going to be the same step number three for Richtoff, and only we're going to be powering it in different ways. What you require to power the obelisk for Dr. Maxis are two turbines, so two, two players with one turbine each, and one player must have EMPs. So the goal here is to uh, place your turbines on either side of the obelisk, uh, and draw the Avogadro into the pylon, underneath the pylon, and EMP him in order to provide enough power to the obelisk for whatever it is that Dr. Maxis requires his power for. So we're back here at the pylon, and it just happens that we completed Richtoff inside first. That's why the pylon is going to have these glowing lights on them. But I would recommend that you complete Dr. Maxis first. It's the easiest to do, especially at low rounds. So the Avogadro has spawned in here. What we're doing is placing our turbines on either side, one on either side of the obelisk. And we're just waiting for the Avogadro to get closer. We need him to be underneath the pylon. Again, we have no perks, so his, uh, his electrical attack does a lot of damage. And we're just waiting for him to move. He just seems to be attacking up there. We're trying to get him to re-manifest and come closer to us so that we can throw the MP. Don't throw the MP until he's underneath the pylon. And it looks like he's close enough here. We're going to toss the MP. We've done well, but he needs or requires more energy, so we need another step here. And what we're going to require is for every player to have a turbine. 
All we need to do now is to have two dirt turbines running beside the obelisk and an additional two running at uh, two of the glowing green streetlights, which serve as teleporters with the denizens. So Hyper and I are going to remain at the pylon and uh, Mankiller and Axel are going to go off to two of the street lamps. Now the best street lamps to do this at, and uh, I believe they work with any street lamp. The first one is at the bus depot. Again, nice location. And the thing is, with both of these street lamps, neither of them in the, are in the fog, so you don't have to worry about those guys, those little guys that jump on your head and scratch your eyes out. You can just throw your EMPs. And the second is at the diner, and the diner is another perfect location. So we just need to coordinate. Axel and Mankiller are going to put their turbines down at the lamp posts, and then Hyper and I are going to put our, our uh, turbines down right beside the obelisk, and uh, this is what happens. Proper study can always yield a good test score. And that is it. That's when you would receive your trophy or achievement. If you hadn't already done so, you do get a drop right away. And I believe you do get drops um, every so often after maybe every five minutes or so. You can get another drop in that game only. Um, and that's it. I mean, he doesn't even say anything. Uh, there's just these orange lights now that, uh, that travel to the top of the tower. And uh, we got the tur these turbines running, but we can pick them up. And we're done. That is uh, Tower of Babel. Now, there may be more to the story yet, whether this occurs on the actual transit map as it exists now, or once new DLC comes out for Black Ops 2. Who knows? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. So we're going to move on to Richthofen's uh, sort of storyline story or branching of this uh, Tower of Babel. And you can actually get the trophy or achievement Either way, you can get it by completing Dr. Maxis' side or by completing Dr. Richthofen's side. And you can actually go ahead and complete Richthofen's side now by going and turn on, turning on the power and following the steps we're going to present here, and vice versa. If you complete Richthofen's, you can complete Dr. Maxis's. The other thing that you should note is that when you exit the game now, your progress will be saved. You will never have to complete this again for Dr. Maxis, and once you complete it for Dr. Richthofen, uh, you'll never have to complete it for him again either. And in sub subsequent games, when you turn the power on and off, you will not hear from either of them. Okay, so let's move on to uh, Richthofen's branch. All right, so we're on step number three for Richthofen, and we need to build the jet gun. Well, there are four components that go into it. The first is found in the power plant, and it's a coil of wires. And it could be in, in one of several locations, so you may have to look around. It's, sometimes it's on that barrel that's right in front of us right there. Uh, sometimes it's down on this catwalk to the left on top of uh, some boxes. And uh, sometimes it's right there where Mankiller is showing us it to be. So we're going to pick that up. That is the first component. Next up is the actual jet engine, which we've always found in the tunnel in between the bus depot and the diner. We're just going to go over here. That's not it. That's the board. The jet engine could be, it actually could be there in that location. That's why I wanted to show that. It could be that there in that board location. Uh, here it is in the other location. I believe there are only two locations that parts can be in the tunnel. And uh, I'm actually going to drop it over by the board where there's some lighting and uh, let you get a good look at uh, the jet engine here. So let's check it out. There it is. Pretty fantastic. I think people had been referring to the jet gun as a wonder weapon, but I don't believe it is. It's, it's a jet engine. You turn it on and it fires its jet. The third component is the handle. It can be found in Nocter Untoten. Nocter Untoten is actually on the other side of the street, the street uh, opposite to where the pylon is located. So 
There is corn on both sides of the streets. Uh, where the pylon is, is a bit more of a maze. On the other side of the street, it's a bit easier to get into. Now, it could be in any one of three locations. It could be on that shelf that's just to my left. It could be by the stairs. There's a shelf right under the stairs right here. Or it could be in where it is right now when we're going to go pick it up on this, this shelf on the right-hand side. And we're going to pick that up. And that is the actual handle to allow us to carry the, uh, the jet gun. There it is there. The final component is the gauge, and the gauge is found in the hunter's cabin. The hunter's cabin is located in between the power station and the town. If you travel from the power station in the direction the bus travels towards the town, uh, just stick to your right. If you just hug the right side and just keep mo going, uh, you will find the hunter's cabin no problem. And now we have all four components, so we're going to go to the town and assemble the jet gun. The workbench location for the jet gun is actually located in the town. It's the, in the building to my right, which is the bar. And uh, we're going to go in there and assemble the last parts. And there is the jet gun. The Thrustodyne Aeronautics Model 23. Now, what we need to do is actually bring it to the pylon for the next step. Now we have to power the obelisk. The first thing we have to do is fire the jet gun, and we're going to fire it directly at the radio and the meteor rock. That's where we've had the most success. Uh, I believe you can fire it anywhere in and around the workbench, the, uh, the obelisk itself. But it's not enough. Now, so we basically enabled the obelisk to receive element 115. Now we just have to sit here in and under the pylon and kill a bunch of zombies. Now, there was some talk that uh, you had to use explosive weapons. That is not true, because we're not using explosive weapons at all, and we actually get to the next step where we actually have too much power. So let's listen. All right, so Richtofen is directing us to reduce the amount of incoming power by a factor of four. So what we have to do is step five. Step five, we have to, every player, every single player, all four of us, have to have EMPs. So it may cost you a lot of points trying to hit the box, and it took us definitely a lot of time to get four EMPs. But you'll just have to keep trying, build points, and just keep hitting the box. Once you have four EMPs, you have to locate each player, one at a, at a different lamppost. The uh, green ones that are flashing green now, uh, located throughout the map. And just simply coordinate an EMP toss directly underneath the lamp. That will reduce the power by a factor of four, and this is what we get. Yeah, yeah, you did it! Soon this beautiful planet will be here once more. And the flesh will cover the Earth! What a glorious day that will be for you! You will be the hero that has saved all of the Earth for me to play with! <laughs> And that is all she wrote. Everything's glowing purple now. We get our trophy for Tower of Babel. Again, if you had done the Dr. Max's side first, then you would have got it there. Uh, but we had already done uh, Richthofen when we did Dr. Max's. That's why we didn't get our trophy indication when we did that part or that storyline. So that's it. That's, I don't know. I mean... It's not much to it. Like I said, uh, at the end of Dr. Max's part, I believe there is more to it. And who knows? I'm Hopefully there's more to it now. I hope we don't have to wait for DLC in order for this to the story to continue. But I, I don't know. I think there is more. we got to figure out what to do with the nav cards and uh, possibly the electrical trap. But uh, we'll, we'll wait and see, I guess. Or just pl keep playing and try and scour the map. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, interactive guide for the Tower of Babel trophy slash achievement. We'll see you next time, guys. Spider out.